Are you constantly applying from one job to the next and for some reason you never get a call for an interview? In today's video, I'm going to show you why your resume sucks. So what's going on guys? It's Yaziah, your success consultant, and today we're going to help you get that job. Today I'm going to show you the top three reasons why your resume is not getting you the job that you deserve. So as always, subscribe to this YouTube channel and be your brother's keeper and share this video. So let's go ahead and hop right in. The number one reason why you've been getting turned down for a lot of jobs is because you don't have clarity in your message. And it all starts with your objective. Have you ever noticed a lot of times when you look at people's resumes, it never really states what you're trying to accomplish for the specific company that you're applying for. Instead, a resume objective will say something like, oh yeah, seeking a new position so I can grow my gifts and talents in a new organization. Who cares about that? If somebody is hiring you for a job, all they care about is, can you get the job done, yes or no? And you got to be able to prove that in the opening statement of your resume. There's so many times where I'll look at a resume and it might not have an objective or the objective is just so vague, it doesn't actually do anything for the resume. If you have a very good objective in your resume, it's actually going to set the tone on whether or not you're going to get a call back because it's going to be an intention grabber so that they don't have to actually read the rest of your resume. A lot of people when they're hiring for jobs, they make decisions fast on the basis of the first two sentences that they see on your resume. The average recruiter is going to make a decision on whether or not they're going to want to hire you or give you an interview within 30 seconds of them looking at your resume. So, you got to be able to have a clear objective, okay? What is your objective that will add value to the organization? Not what's in it for you. What's the clearly defined objective that's going to show why you're the perfect candidate for the position? Is it because of the fact that you have years of experience? Is it because of the fact that you have a tremendous skill set that's tailor-made for the position that you desire to apply for? What is it that makes you the number one top candidate for this position? You need to state that in one sentence or two tops. No more than one sentence or two, less is more, okay? Let's talk about the number two reason why your resume is not getting you the callbacks that you deserve. Number two reason is very similar to number one. It is super vague. Now let me explain what I mean here on super vague. You know, a lot of times when you look at somebody's resume, and this might be yours, but don't feel ashamed, now is the time for you to be able to fix it. A lot of times when you look on a person's resume and a hiring manager is trying to make a decision on whether or not they want to get you the position, the resume will say something like, oh, you know, I'm super loyal, I'm super dedicated, hardworking, willing to be able to do anything once. What does that mean? <laughs> if everybody is applying for a job, don't you think it's a little self-evident that everybody is there to work? I mean, honestly. Who's going to apply for a job and say, you know, I'm a lazy ass bum. I'm just going to coast it and be on social media all day. I'm going to show up late. Could you hire me? Everybody's going to say that they work hard. It's evident in the fact that you're applying for a job. And I don't know what it is, but at some point down the line, somebody peddled a myth, probably in school, that said, by talking about how much of a hard worker and how easygoing you are, somehow that's going to make your resume seem that much more compelling. When in fact, it's actually doing the opposite. It's screening you out. Here's something that you need to think about. You're competing in a world with 7.4 billion people. You're not the only person 
that wants that job. So if you got 50 other people that are applying for the exact same position, don't you think that they're saying the same thing too? Don't you think that they're saying that they're hardworking? Don't you think that they're saying that they're easy to get along with, right? That's just kind of the general vanilla thing to say on the average resume. But if you have an average resume, you're not going to get hired because nobody wants average. People want standout performers. That's why they want a standout resume. So what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to make your resume based upon tangible skills that lead to results, okay? What is it that determines how much you will get, play, get paid in the marketplace? The skills and value that you provide to the marketplace because the level of value that you provide to the market is based around your set of skills. It's not actually based around your college degree. A lot of times people will look at that as a rites of passage, but the number one thing that determines how much money you're going to make in this free economy is how much value are you adding to the marketplace? So every line of your resume needs to be able to clearly define how your skill set has brought tangible value to the marketplace by way of your previous job experiences. So let's say that you have been somebody that's worked at a post office and maybe, you know, you put on the resume typically, oh, you know what? Well, I filed the mail. Okay, but how much mail did you file? How was your mail filing skills better than everybody else that got hired for the, for the position? Because if you did it at the same pace as everybody else, you shouldn't really get hired for a job because you're just a commodity. But if you're able to file the mail maybe 20% better than everybody else, now you're talking. Now you're letting me know that you can contribute more effectively to the bottom line. And so many people write a resume where it just has nothing but like bla uh, bland bullet points that it's hard for a hiring manager to even be able to understand how skilled or what caliber your performance is in comparison to the next person because you're not adding in enough detail. The more detail that you can add about your skill set what type of a level it's on, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, and how that has actually impacted the bottom line of a company, the more inclined a hiring manager is going to be to call you for a resume. Because what does the hiring manager care about when you're applying for a job? Can you make me more money than what I'm willing to pay you for this position? So every single line on the resume should be able to clearly define that. And if you're not clearly defining that, you're wasting your time. That's the reason why the first thing that you got to do is you got to be able to set a clear objective because having a vague objective is like having uh, no objective at all. If you have a clear objective about how you can clearly add value to the company, you're much more likely to be able to stand out from everybody else that's putting a bunch of just vague fluff, okay? So as you're writing all the bullet points in your resume about your job experiences, about the things that you did, you need to be able to answer some questions. You need to be able to talk about, well, how much money did you help to make the company? Did your process and how you worked at the company, the way that you approached your position, did you help save the company valuable time since you're getting paid maybe by the hour or since most companies are based around speed, right? And high speed performance, everything's gotta be better, faster, right? More efficient. You need to be able to define line by line how you tangibly added value. And the third and final thing that I would tell you is, a big part of the reason why you're not being able to get callbacks for jobs is because your resume is too damn generic. You're taking one resume and you're applying for 20 different jobs using the same sheet of paper, even though those 20 different jobs are for 20 different positions. The best way for you to be able to get the attention of a hiring manager is to let the hiring manager know that your resume has their name on it. 
How do you do that? Well, for starters, you make your resume tailor-made for that actual position at that specific company. It's not going to be all the work in the world. Literally, change the title of the company for every resume that you apply for. Change the position name. Have these things written on the resume. The reason why this matters is because you have to be able to stand out. And oftentimes, it's not so much about who has the best set of skills. It's who looks the best on paper so that way you can present yourself well enough to get your foot in the door. Okay, so these are, these are three really important things. I could talk so more, so much more at length about these different areas, but I want to be able to keep this sweet and to the point, and I want to be able to give you a free gift that's going to allow you to get a better job within the next 90 days. I'm going to show you how to be able to get that done. I've put together a free gift just for you. It's called The Black Man's Guide to Career Advancement. It's going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to go about getting a better job within the next 90 days. So it's going to show you how to go about structuring your resume, how to be able to tear down the resume that's not working for you right now, even though you keep trying to put it out there and nobody's calling you back, nobody's interested, how to properly structure your resume, how to be able to properly follow up after your resume is submitted, how to be able to conduct yourself at a networking mixer where a lot of business deals go down and how to be able to properly frame the messages that you're going to send to people that you connect with at those networking events. I'm going to show you how to be able to plan for your interview, how to be able to knock it out of the park. And also the next thing that you need to know is when to be able to negotiate your salary as well as the hours in which you work. I'm proud to be able to say I've got multiple clients on file that have worked with me privately that have made $10,000 salary increases all by being able to follow the steps that I gave to them. And that was without having to go back to college, without having to take on a new skill set and the training and a certification, all they had to do was remarket their skills, okay? So make sure that you click the link below get into that black man's guide to career advancement. All right. So if you like this video, make sure that you put a big thumbs up for me. I appreciate your support. Share this with a friend, be your brother's keeper. A chain is only as strong as his weakest link. We must help our community and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.